Where is it? Right there. See the sign? Y'all be careful where you step. Welcome back party people. Today we're exploring more of Uwari National Forest. Now we enter the forest from the northwest on Highway 109 and travel south. And as we pass just by the hunt camp, we head down Reservation Road, over Moccasin Creek, and hang a left on Forest Service Road 555. Now this is a popular free camping area in the forest, but it is a weekday, so we feel confident we may be able to grab a spot here. Now this is a good base camp for us down this particular road because we don't have to drive that far to get to camp. So we proceed past the OHV area here, Cotton Place, you can see there on your right, Cotton Place is one of the OHV trailheads in Uwari National Forest. So we proceed down the road just a bit further and on the left, one of the prime camp spots is available. Now you can stay in these sites for up to 14 days. So now the task is trying to maneuver down this campsite driveway here. It does have some washouts and some fairly large roots. And with the bike rack on the back of the van, my departure clearance is lower than it normally is. So G Money's doing a great job of helping me negotiate those obstacles and making it down to the bottom of the campsite here. We're not going to stay for now, so we're just going to unload a few things so we can call the campsite ours. And then we're going to set out to explore. Task completed, we're all set up, so now we're ready to start exploring, and our first stop is gonna be the Coggins Gold Mine. We're back out to Highway 109 once again. This time we're backtracking though. We're headed northwest, and as we get to the town of El Dorado, we proceed to Coggins Mine Road. And as we travel up Coggins Mine Road for a bit, we find an interesting path on the right with a gate. I think there's a mine shaft out here. Down there somewhere. But, you know, can't break the law. Look who it is. See the sign that says property of the United States? Where is it? Right there. See the sign? So I think. They've got it fenced off pretty good back here. So the area behind the fence is the cut. It is pretty steep back there. And as you can imagine, there's all kinds of things that have either washed up or being dumped out there. Washing machines, household trash, other items. I didn't venture down there because we were getting eat up by mosquitoes. So we were trying to find the shaft entrance as soon as possible just to get out of there. Yeah, the mosquitoes are freaking bad. Straight down. It is straight down. People have been throwing junk. Sticking the camera in there, I'm not actually going in there. Supposedly, the Coggins Russell Gold Mine was one of the largest gold mines in Montgomery County. Abandoned mine. The mine operated off and on from the late 1880s to the early 1930s. Water, explosives, unstable ladders, deadly gas. That's it right there. So I did manage to affix the camera to the selfie stick and get a shot of inside the fence there. I think there's more to explore here and I'm not sure this is even the correct mine shaft entrance. So I would like to come back to this area perhaps in the winter time when the bugs have subsided because uh, they were really driving us crazy. Well, you lucky. Think. Yeah, so I just went back there. I'm not going to trespass, but uh, it's all fenced up, the shaft entrance. It's, uh, there's a wire fence in the inside, and then there's a big metal fence around the outside. And a uh, big danger sign, so we'll let that one be. But there's a deep cut through there for sure, and some big, deep holes. All right, let's go to the low bridge. 
Okay, we're going to backtrack once again and head south on Coggins Mine Road. And this time we're going to turn left onto Low Water Bridge Road, also known as Forest Service Road 1301. Now that road does cross over the Uari River down just a bit. And that bridge is quite low, and hence the name Low Water Bridge. We're going to see if the van can actually make it across the bridge. Continue on Low Water Bridge Road for half a mile. Now don't blink, you may miss it. Low Water Bridge is a single lane slab bridge built in the early 1960s. Its total length comes in at 126 feet, but its deck width is a mere 10.8 feet. We're pulling into the parking area here on the right, and just below you can see the Uari River. This serves as a popular access point for paddlers that want to paddle downstream to NC 109. Kind of crappy looking, that's for sure. Why? You sure you want to go over there? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, where are you going? I know. Porton. No Porton. Here we go. One thing I didn't notice was any weight restriction signs on this particular bridge, so I just assumed that uh, a good four tons or four and a half tons would be okay. We made our way slowly across. It does have some uh, potholes in the uh, surface there, so you kind of have to go slow, otherwise you create a lot of rocking back and forth inside the van. Everybody was anxious and excited at the same time to uh, just cross and get to the other side. Giddy up, giddy up, let's go, giddy up, eee! Woo, we made it, all right. So uh, it was getting a bit late in the day, so we all kind of decided, hey, let's head back to base camp and perhaps we'll get dinner started and have a early dinner and maybe even have time to cast out a line and see if we can catch a bass or a crappie. Look at her playing around with the air conditioner already. <laughs> yeah, let me show you this. This is uh, this is something I didn't show you since last time, but uh, I jerry-rigged the, uh, the air conditioner in here. So it's in here permanently, and I've got uh, foil duct work running to the to the front, and uh, we actually run it <laughs> inside the van on the way here. So we got two four-inch ducts with a gate on it, and you can. Uh, you can direct it behind the fan and let it blow on you or and then there's one for the bottom bunk as well but we'll probably do a little bit more in depth with that later on but right now we got all the bug screens up because well it's buggy so we get pops a snack there and then we're gonna eat you have seen us at this campsite before it's uh it's down near Cotton Place off of Reservation Road in Uari. It's one of the larger uh, boondocking spots, but it can be difficult to get to because you got to kind of pull up in there and then you got to back in there. And uh, not a lot of room between these two trees here. We'll get situated and get some dinner going and we'll pick you up when we get somewhere interesting. I've been stoking the fire. It's been hard work. Igniting that fire with just two pieces of wood and a bow. Today we met our biggest fan from YouTube. Look. Hi. Ain't that something? That thing hits you on the ear, scary crap out of you. That's what I said. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very peaceful just sitting around the campfire and listening to the sights and the sounds of nature. But we were getting tired, so it was time to pack it in for the night. We'll see you in the morning. ORV is off road vehicle. Off-highway vehicles. Sometimes they'll do OHV, sometimes they'll do ORV. Basically what they're saying is, is if you ride on this road, you got to have a licensed vehicle. They consider this road a public road. All laws apply. So you can't come flying down here on the ATV or the Ranger or write you a ticket. A good morning is in order. So I've changed maps on you because I think this particular trail map here will help you see 
where we are in relation to where we are going. So Cotton Place is near our base camp. We're going to go up the road over to Dutch John, which is another trailhead for OHV use. So just a quick view of Dutch John there. There's more parking up the road, but uh, we were headed to Kings Mountain Point as our final destination. No alcohol, just remember. All right, we're at Kings Point at the old fishing pier out here. We're going to cast out a little bit and see if we can get one of these bass something. I don't like this. Baby, oh. It's got to float because the water goes up and down when they release the dam. Very uh, quiet and solid to you out here today. Try to see what happens. Just supposed to dive down a couple of feet. I'm gonna change another one. Yeah, let's try something a little bit smaller. Despite our best efforts, we just couldn't snag a fish. I think it was too hot and also too late in the day. The fish had already fed and headed to deeper waters. So we decided to end our adventure here and make our way home. On the way home, we decided to take a quick detour through the town of Carthage. Carthage is known for the annual buggy festival. You can see a horse carriage or buggy on the blue banner hanging from the light pole there. Carthage was known for making horse carriages for rural North Carolina from the mid 1800s to the early 1920s. We hope you enjoyed the content. Just remember, everybody needs a plan B. Cha-cha for now.